Welcome to a video where we want to show you how to automate websites using the MBS FileMaker plugin. So let's say you have a website with a form and you like to automate filling out this form, like putting some text here in the field. Now the MBS plugin comes with a handy utility called Form Utility. Oh, it's a download. So, 64-bit uh, for Mac. Let's open it. There it is. Um, yes. So, you take the URL from the form, copy, paste, load here. Uh, yes. So now we have all the forms here and we can look on the forms here and see all the fields. Now you see the plugin calls are shown here. So we have a su suggestion on what you could use to, to fill the form value. And let's try to see if that works in FileMaker. So let's launch FileMaker. Um, make a new project. I don't need that. Um, so we edit the layout, we place a web viewer, we copy the URL, copy and paste. Safe. Yeah. And now we have the form in FileMaker. We can try the function calls right in the data viewer. So I go on watch and on the plus symbol here. And now from our form utility, I could simply take a set call, copy it into my data viewer and then realize that I missed to name the web viewer. Okay, back to the web viewer. It needs to have a name. Otherwise, we have no way of knowing which web viewer on the layout to access. Also, the plugin may just fall back to the first. But not sure about that right now. We usually name them. So let's say rename it web. And we put in a value, hello, oops, hello, and you see it's right there already. So I can type here and you see my numbers appear right away because FileMaker ev evaluates this expression right away. So next try a text area. There's a different call for text areas. And we can simply paste it here. Again, use web. Put in a value. And you see a second hello. Now let's try the same with the script. I go to the script workspace. I say plus and Set fields is our script. We usually just use set variable script steps. The variable we set doesn't matter because it's just a placeholder where we see the actual return value, but we, in most cases, we just see it in the debugger and don't really care about what's coming back. But of course, if you want to write a solution which works uh, in the future, you may want to include some error checking, so you may want to check if the return value is okay or the website may be changed. Let's say, so this is a form select for the single select field here. So let's say we take the Michael Jackson. Yeah. 
Let's OK. We save the script. We run the script and it's selecting Michael Jackson. Let's say we take the next script step for the multiple field where just the field name is different. Paste. And now we type a second name here. Save the script and run it and you see both are selected. Next we could check some checkboxes which may be frequent for you. So let's say this is the one for American Express copy. Go make another set variable script step. Web is our web viewer. Value is one variable, doesn't care. Run, save, works. So this is a simple web form and we automated it. Next we want to work on a more complex form. So let's say we take a different form. Say on the Monkeybyte website there is a newsletter form and here we have a little JavaScript on this uh, checkbox which uh, turns on and off the newsletter. So let's say we want to automate this. We copy the URL, put it here. So we loaded the website. We see here we have this uh, checkbox. Let's see in the form utility what the name of my checkbox is. So there's a subscribe news checkbox and let's just say we want to set it in a script. Let's make a new script. Set variable, paste, web, run it, save. You see the checkbox got checked, but the JavaScript didn't run, so our button didn't enable. This is a common problem with a lot of websites. Like when you type in a zip code, they may do some validation and only allow you to send the form when the validation succeeds. So we have to use a little bit JavaScript here to actually get this to send. But before we do that, I want to show you a little trick on how to see what's going on. So we go to our documentation on the web view for the preferences, set preferences, where is it, there, and here you can set the preferences for the developer extra, so just copy this, make a new, new script, enable inspector, The good thing is this is only temporary, so your users may not get it, but you can run the script at any time and get the inspector. Now in the inspector, you can actually take a look on what's going on here. Like this is a label and this may have a change trigger. Let's see. Here, event listeners, no, nothing. Well, uh, somewhere it should be. So we can use the console here. Oh no, it's on the input, of course. A lot of stuff here defined. There is an event handler for change. 
There it is. Okay, so this checkbox listens to the change event and we want to give it a change event. So we will just generate a change event with the MBS plugin and our run JavaScript function. For that we go back here and look for the run JavaScript function. Um, that's here. And right in the examples, I think we have that already here. There's one running a change event. So copy this. Go back to our checkbox example. Let's duplicate the line. Paste. So oh, what's, the, what's the field we want to change in JavaScript? Let's go back here to the inspector. Click on the checkbox. Well, where's my inspector here? Oh, yeah. For having the inspector in uh, Safari, you have to, of course, to enable it. So, show developer menu. Now there's an inspector. Here in the inspector, we see the checkbox has an ID, subscribe news. So let's test it. Document. This is JavaScript where we can pick elements by ID, by tag, tag names, by class names from CSS. And we just pick it here by its name. So get element by ID, subscribe news. Oh. We use singer quotes. Yeah, we got an element. So I copy this, go here into my JavaScript and paste it. Okay. Store. Now we close the checkbox. We run it again. And yes, there it is. The checkbox got checked and the register button is enabled. So if you have a need to get some buttons to noticing your changes, you may want to send change events as we do here. And sometimes there are special buttons where you can send a click event so you can simulate a user clicking on it. But for the clicking, we also have a button, uh, a function. There is a click function. Oh, let's just look for click. So there's a click input one. Where you can just say, this is a form name, this is a button name, and uh, no, this is not the click. Here's the click. There, we automatically click the submit button. But if the form has a regular submit button, you could also use our form submit function, which would just trigger the default action for the form. So the next thing I want to show you is a little bit different. Let's go to our uh, documentation page and let's say you have a website and you want to get a piece of information there. So, for example, you want to check every morning automatically what the function count is for the MES plugin. So you can send yourself a notification if it changes. And we got a few new functions for you. So we go to Edit Layout, and this time we load our documentation website. Okay. Exit, save. Now we open the data viewer and recently we just added our web view evaluate function which evaluates all nice things with some JavaScript. So you see here, let's say evaluate one plus two. Let's paste it and you see it's run immediately. So this little JavaScript code here is executed in the web viewer right in the window behind and we get directly the result. There is no need for a callback, no need for FMP URL. We get the result right away. 
works for Mac, Windows and iOS. Now we want, well, not, not run a CSC, but uh, let's say we want to get this value on the, on the website. So let's go back to Safari, to the start page here, and let's just inspect in Safari. If I want to get this value, I would have to find, well, the content, the tab list, the main, okay, there is no directly ID on this, but I can probably look on the content item and then say go to the second paragraph. So let's try that. Document. Sometimes we go to items by tag name, by CSS classes. Get element by ID in this case. Let's say we get content. Then within the content, let's say we look for the elements by tag name and say, give me all the paragraphs of text. And let's see what we get. We get an HTML collection and this HTML collection contains our text here as a second element. So we continue to type here and say, from this array, we pick the first item, this is On top the topics list, let's say we pick the second item. This is the number of how many functions we have. Now this is HTML, so let's ask for the text for it. So we get the raw text. Now you could take the number in FileMaker, of course, by just using read as uh, get as number, and FileMaker will just ignore the text and give you the number. Or we do it right away here in JavaScript and say we want a regular expression, very useful, to just say go and look for, and that's a special character thing, backslash D is a digit and one or more digits with the plus symbol. And then we may get several expressions back and there's our number. So from this result, we pick again the first one. And now we have just the number. Um, this little JavaScript copy, paste it here, paste. And there you have the result right away. So imagine that you could have a script which loads a certain website, waits for it to finish loading. Oh, how do you do that? Do you know? Web view, and we have a little helper functions, and this is, is loading. So you load the website, and then you have a little loop where you do script pauses until the website is finished loading. Then you can run all those evaluates to maybe pick 20 different values from the website and put them in your database. And that's all for today. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.